Champions Cup semi-final number one, folks. 40 points to 17. Doesn't seem that much like a semi-final. Semi-finals are supposed to be close. Arm wrestles. Um, not so much. But, um, yeah. Maybe Toulouse were a bit spent after the huge effort to get over the hump last week. You know, extra time and whatnot. But I don't think many sides would have withstood the um, the relentlessness of that Leinster attack. But anyway, we're going to go through the key events. Some stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on the game. Pretty cracking crowd, obviously, getting behind uh, the Leinster boys with a few uh, away fans there as well. But, um, yeah, largely a, a pretty bloody good crowd. And uh, they were treated to some pretty relentless Leinster play early on. To be honest, I thought Toulouse did all right to escape with only three points conceded when Leinster were just hot on attack. And they've probably got LaBelle to thank for that because Leinster set up a pretty perfect move out wide where Jimmy O'Brien's got basically a one-on-one -on -one with LaBelle who's having to drift across and all O'Brien has to do is step back in to beat him, which you've seen wingers do a hundred times before. Um, but LaBelle manages to stick with him. He doesn't overcommit towards the sideline. So it's a good try-saving tackle from him. And O'Brien did the right thing, but LaBelle was just up to the task. So... And they go back for advantage, it's three points to nil. And then suddenly against the turn of play, DuPont managed to get a try to nowhere. That one, you gotta mention the Tyke Burlong. Burlong? Tyke Furlong pass, 20 odd meters. It's beautiful wide ball. Uh to Keenan, who gets a nice line break. Lends the hot on attack again after just scoring. But then um the Gibson Park little dinking kick through is blocked. DuPont picks up the scraps and just boom, length of the field. There's nobody home. And uh, suddenly Toulouse are in front, 7 points to 3. Not for that long. Leinster's pressure, despite the fact they had just conceded and maybe threatened to disrupt their momentum, not really. It was just a bit of a speed bump, if anything. I mean, um, Leinster still put the pressure on. Um, they managed to get a try through James Lowe and a penalty, so that makes it 13-7. They're back to being pretty comfortably in front. Uh, Ty Furlong unfortunately has to go off on 16 minutes, so fingers crossed it's nothing too major for him, because the scrum certainly seemed a bit depowered once he left the field, but that's that's pretty stock standard, man. Whenever that guy goes off, you're going to be missing that kind of bit of X-Factor, as much as Al Alato is a great player as well. Um, uh, Furlong is just world class. So, Lens to carry on though, Sexton with a line break, gets it to Josh van der Fleer, who's still got those power carries in his game. Um, at this point in 2022, 20 points to 7. They had the TMO check that one, apparently, because they thought maybe he'd double move, but I don't know. They, they at least checked it pretty quickly. It seemed pretty obvious that he'd done it kind of all in one bit of um, momentum. So it's, it's looking like happy days at 20 points to 7. Although Ramos at least getting a penalty. It was from scrum time, I think, as well. Uh, keeps to losing the game 20 points to 10. Although... Um, Toulouse didn't do themselves any favours when Leinster then won a penalty and Alstart, I think, a bit too much uh, back chat with the ref, cost them 10 metres and 3 points. And in the build-up to that phase of play, I've got to give credit as well, James Lowe's massive boot is just such a territorial gainer, isn't it? He's, um, yeah, he's, they, they really use that guy's skill set to, um, to their full potential. So, 23 points to 10 at half time. It's not looking close. Like, the one to lose try, to be fair, has come against the run of play. They have been putting the lens, the scrum under a bit of pressure since Furlong goes off, but for the most part, it's been lens to Ray. Um, second half, a few more errors. I don't think um, either side could really find the kind of killer blow. There was a few penalties conceded. Uh, Maofu had been yellow carded at the end of the first half for a bit of a cynical play taking out the nine when he didn't have the ball. But interestingly, Leinster didn't score any points like in terms of tries during that yellow card period. But as soon as they went back to 15 on 15, um, it's turnover ball when uh, Gibson Park manages to charge down the Toulouse boys trying to exit. They managed to find space for James Lowe and suddenly it's 30 points to 10. At 30 to 10, I know it's still kind of early on 49 minutes, but it, it's looking like this game's pretty much in the bag. Um, Toulouse do get one back through Tolafua, which he's got some kind of twinkle toes dancing feet down the touchline from a mall. Very close to going out, but he did well to stay in. 
Um, so 30 points to 17 is still, I mean, it's still not exactly under threat, the Leinster boys. And then um, the game is absolutely the final nail in the coffin when um, when Keenan goes over on 78. James Lowe also went down maybe a little bit um, uncomfortable towards the end, but hopefully he's all right. So, um, yeah, man, what can I say? Dominant. Dominant performance. Um, Toulouse are a great team, but they were just beaten by an even better team today in Leinster. Run meters, 561 to 470. Don't need to tell you who's got more. Defenders beaten 33-19. Clean breaks, 8-2. Territory, 70-30. Position was kind of pretty much even, but man. Like the Leinster backs. Henshaw, 63 run meters. Ringrose, 48. Low, 82. Jimmy O'Brien, 66. Keenan, 95. Like, I mean, Ramos got a few. DuPont got a few with his kind of... Um, his intercept, not intercept, but a turn of a ball and try. Intermac had a few good runs, but largely the, the Toulouse backs, the wingers especially, were kept pretty quiet. Like LaBelle's best player of the game was the tackle on O'Brien. Um, Van der Fleer, 13 from 13 tackles. That guy's immense. I mean, give credit though to I'll start 20 out of 21, barring that bit of back chat. You know, putting a bit of a defensive shift, but um, yeah, just too good. Absolutely too good. So um, yeah, we will see who awaits Leinster in Marseille in a couple of weeks. I think a lot of Leinster fans would like to see La Rochelle, right? Just for the um, the Ronan O'Gara factor. But we will kind of have to wait and see. You guys let me know your thoughts on the game. Like I said, I didn't think there was... Um, there wasn't that much tension about it. Just because it was so dominant. Um, but yeah, it's going to take some stop on these Leinster boys. Can they back up this kind of performance level in a fortnight's time? Because that's, even for them, that was um, pretty top-notch. Uh, commiserations to Toulouse. Not going to get a double, but, um, yeah, as I said, um, they were away from home against a pretty relentless side, and uh, I don't think many sides would have been able to compete with it. But anyway, you guys have any thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.